Hello and welcome to Out Motorsports, the channel for cars as you are. My name is Tyler and today, if you couldn't tell, we're not in DC, we're in Palm Springs, California, and Jaguar Land Rover has been nice enough to give us their Defender 130 for the weekend. This is the long boy. We've had the 90, we've had the 110, and this is the three row Defender 130. And my argument is that these have very quickly become one of the only cars that you can take off-roading through some serious trails during the day and at night, valet it and have that be a fully socially acceptable thing. They're cool, they're fancy now, and uh, they're kind of a social statement. So today we're going to do just that. We're going to go hiking, and after we're done hiking, we're going to go out to dinner and hopefully valet this thing out front. So you guys get to come along with us and during all of that, we'll give this a review, we'll walk around it and we'll see what's different between this and the ones that we have already driven. So let's go. So before we get started, I just wanted to go over some of the more surface level differences between this 130 and the Defenders that we've already driven. Obviously, like the name implies, this is the longest wheelbase model. These come in three different lengths. You get the 90, the 110, and this long boy, the three row Defender 130. Another thing is that they also come in three different engine options. You can get a two liter four cylinder, a three liter straight six, or a big V8. What's funny is you can get the small boy with the big V8, but you can't get this with the V8. So this has the biggest engine option uh, that you can get, at least for the 130, and that's the three liter Ingenium straight six. It makes 406 foot pounds of torque and 395 horsepower. Those numbers are with a mild hybrid system that this vehicle is equipped with. The base engine on the 130 specifically is the Ingenium straight six without any electric assistance. You can't get the base two liter that you can on the other wheelbase options on the 130. The biggest difference in the reason that you would get the 130 is obviously the third row, and I think this extra length that's obviously just all been added back here has been the most polarizing piece of design on this entire truck. We don't really talk much about design here, but everybody that I have talked to about this has brought up the fact of the extra length in the back. Honestly, I think this whole area looks really good, and for what it's worth, it has gotten so many more looks than the 110 in the 90s that I've driven, at least around town here in Palm Springs. Uh, this is Tahoe size, so it's pretty imposing to look at in person, especially uh, this has three different air suspension modes, and when it's fully lifted in its highest mode, it's, it's a pretty imposing looking rig. However, this extra length is here for a reason, and we will test out the third row. For reference, I'm 5'9", and I've truly sat on worse planes with worse legroom than this. And once we're back here, it's really not that bad. I have some room from my knees to the back of the second row, and they haven't fully cheaped out on material qualities back here at all. This armrest with this cup holder right here is soft touch. This is obviously more plastic, but you get a little storage net here, and you still get vents as well. And you also get a nice little moon roof back here. It doesn't open from what I can tell. Uh, the only one that does is the pano roof uh, for your front passengers, but it's a really fun option. And it's honestly not a bad place to be back here. So if you are shopping for this, um, it is the only off-road oriented vehicle like this that uh, actually has a third row and it's honestly a pretty nice place to be. So setting off for our hike in the 130, uh, we'll do some driving impressions. And this is, really the place I think the Defender shines above its competition. In my mind, the direct competitors to this are like Ford Bronco, Jeep Wrangler series of vehicles, just because of how capable these are off-road. And when you sit in this and you drive it, the extra comfort and the extra levels of luxury are immediately apparent. Things like road noise um, are really exceptional and something that I think is this off-road capable and just general comfort on the highway and body composure and just driving dynamics in general are really just like a step above anything else I've been in that is this capable off-road. So driving around town here in Palm Springs, it's obviously still a very big truck. Um, it, it's pretty long, like I said before, it's Tahoe sized and when you have to maneuver it into smaller parking spaces or just any parking space in general and you're used to driving a more average size vehicle, it feels kind of big uh, because it is. However, it's usable space on the inside like we've already talked about. And 
I've always said that if I'm going to have an SUV this big, I don't want it to try to be sporty. It's The body is composed. It's not like it wallows around a ton, but you feel that you're high up and that it is a big size capable SUV. And I'd rather it do that than be something that it's not. I will say every time I get in a Jaguar Land Rover product that has this Ingenium straight six, I say how much I like it. It's it adapts to so many different applications. In this case, it has plenty of grunt, plenty of torque, and in applications where it uh, feels a little bit more at home to rev out, it, it does that well too. It's just ha it interacts with you a little bit more than something like BMW's B58 does, um, which is the other three liter straight six that people might think of off the top of their heads. Um, this just has more character. It is supercharged and turbocharged, so I guess it lends itself to that in a lot of ways, but it just makes a lot of really good noises and is a totally more than adequate um, power plant for even this size vehicle still. We're dealing with certain levels of uh, inclines and elevation changes just driving around uh, up in the California mountains. And while it does hold a gear a little bit longer, it doesn't ever feel strained or overworked. It doesn't ever sit above 3000 RPM. It just makes a super good amount of torque right there in the mid range where in an application like this, in a vehicle that can tow 8,000 pounds essentially, uh, that's useful, that's what you want. There's a very nice GT3 going over there. Oh, that's really nice. I wasn't gonna say anything because I didn't want to interrupt you, but it is very pretty. While we're sitting in traffic, we'll talk a little bit more about interior creature comfort bits. Uh, this has the 11.1 uh, inch, I believe, uh, Pivi Pro display as standard, and it is so improved over previous generations like we've talked about before. And we like the fact that it gives, allows you to connect multiple devices at the same time, but that does add a level of like confusion and complexity um, that I'm not used to having to deal with. Uh, we have had multiple times where my phone's been connected as well as my boyfriend's phone and we haven't been able to like figure out like where audio is coming from and whose phone the audio is connected to and I'm sure if we spent a little bit more time in this that would become a little bit easier to deal with but just right off the bat it does add um, some levels of complexity that are a little bit confusing to learn from the start. However one thing that is super helpful and is like I feel like one of the only places this is actually as useful as it is is in Palm Springs yesterday there was Santa Ana winds here which is brings in a whole level of dust and air pollutants that um, you really don't want to be outside but you are able to see the level of pollutants in the air on this infotainment system and we actively like watched it rise and lower when we were driving yesterday and it filters that air that comes into the cabin. So it was really cool to see and actually like put into use yesterday in a real world situation. I don't know anywhere else in the world where I think that I would use that the way that I did, but it was super helpful, super, super useful. And uh, we paid attention to that like a fun little gadget as we were driving around. Okay, so fun behind the scenes moment. Here we are, we got to our hike. <laughs> Everything's fun and gorgeous and pretty. And we're taking some pictures and I see a giant puddle of something start leaking out the bottom. But don't panic, it didn't overheat. It just so happens that when you have it on a certain incline and your windshield washer fluid is full, it will leak out the cap.
so we've spent the better part of 10 days out here in LA in Palm Springs with this Defender 130 and it's given us a really good idea of what it's like to actually live with this for a little bit of time and I will say even though this is a niche vehicle it's kind of hard to find a three row off-road oriented vehicle that's this refined. I think that's what sets it apart and that's what makes it good. Things like Jeeps or Broncos do the same things that this does for roughly the same price, but it doesn't do it with the levels of refinement and creature comforts that this one has. This feels just as at home on LA streets as it does on a trail or driving through Joshua Tree over some rutted um, dirt roads. And that I think is what really sets this apart from the competition. So with that said, I wanted to say thank you so much to Land Rover for giving us this vehicle for over a week at this point so we could spend some time with it while we were out here. Thank you guys for watching and as always, please check us out on outmotorsports.com, Facebook and Instagram. We have so many in-person events that you can join us at on the West Coast, hopefully the Midwest and of course the East Coast as well. And as always, we'll see you next time.